Good morning everyone! Today I want to share with you 5 tips to take your travel photography as a tourist to the next level. Let's go! <laughs> Just kidding! I mean, sometimes it happens if I'm very honest. All right, guys, welcome to a new episode. Today is very special because, as you know, I'm in French Polynesia and this place is like paradise. I want to share a lot with you. But something happened yesterday. I went on a kind of tour, 4x4 tour, and I realized how difficult it might be to get good photos when you're a tourist. You know, when you're going with your parents or with your family or with friends who are not photographers, it can be very tricky to get good shots. So I thought, why don't I share with you five tips five things that I think can really really help to get good shots better than the rest of the crowd. Now before we get into it just because it's touristy doesn't mean it's ugly because look at the place we went yesterday it's insane. I know it looks absolutely crazy it's like Jurassic Park over here insane all right so what is the first tip I want to share with you number five is simply timing timing is absolutely everything in photography so if you have the wrong light you're not gonna get the right shot so what you want to do is plan ahead plan before you go somewhere to make sure that you will get the best shots possible if you want that epic sky make sure you plan for sunrise or for sunset and if you want 2 p.m. like direct sunlight which can be great also for beach photos like I'm surrounded by right now well that's a good time also for you so here's an example I had to take the boat to cross islands and I decided to take the last boat the one at 5 30 because I knew I would hit the sunset so I checked the sunset time before and I knew I would hit the sunset now there is always a risk of getting rain or whatever but you want to take that risk because if the sky opens up just a little bit, <laughs> look at that light, look how insane that was, I got so lucky. I managed to get that shot and it got me so, so excited, it reminded me how important timing is. So don't rush it, take your time. And if you go on a tour, make sure you take the early morning one or maybe the evening one, just to make sure you get the best light possible for what you want. Number four, use filters. Oh my God, I cannot stress how important filters are especially polarizing filters if you're in tropical location or if you're in a place with like very strong sun or very boring skies you know like just blue filters are gonna make a huge difference in your photos suddenly you will go from boring photo you know a little bit like everything's like too shiny to a photo where you can see through the surface of the water where you have a deep blue where the forest looks a lot more punchy for the simple reason that if you use polarizing filters you will cut out a lot a lot of reflection in front of your shot so you have different options you can buy cheap ones you can buy expensive ones now my take is if you've never had filters ever in your life and you don't have a budget you can get the cheap ones but if you can get better ones get higher quality ones because it will make a very big difference some have coating to increase saturation in a cheap land and and ugh, it just makes it a little bit hard to work with those photos now i use i dropped a few options in the filters but there is something to know if you don't know how to use it i have a specific videos on filters where you you i explain how you have to turn it etc to get the result you want filters are just essential it really makes your photos punchy when uh, the location might not be and you know if you shoot in midday that's why it gets so interesting especially on the water i was on the boat crossing yesterday on the lagoon and i had the polarizing filter and look at the water how beautiful that looks just thanks to cutting out the reflection on that filters and last tip if you're shooting through glass because for example you're in a car with other tourists well that filter also might help you get rid of the reflection of the glass on the glass from the inside of the car oh yeah so i think that's one of those small things that you can get that really will make a big difference in your shots uh, at least try it let me know how it goes if you're a filter fan let me know your favorite brand in the comments 
super curious. Number three is compose better. And I know that might sound obvious and it's true for any kind of photography. It's simply make sure you compose your shot better. You know, if you're in a group, if with your other people who keep rushing, take your time, you know, make sure that the frame is nice, that whatever is in your background adds to your photo and doesn't distract from it. There is literally nothing that prevents you from taking an extra two minutes to get a good shot well composed. For example, following a rule of symmetry or following some rule of third where you have two thirds of an image that's taken by the ocean, one third uh, by the sky or the contrary. Or if you have a giant cloud and you want two thirds of the image taken by the clouds and one third by the rain that is at the bottom like this shot. Nothing prevents you from doing that except maybe you feel rushed by other people but try to remember you, you're here to get good shots doesn't matter what other people do I mean they will wait for you don't worry they're not gonna abandon you and if they do you might get even better shots on your own once you're abandoned so and it's gonna make a great story too just don't get abandoned in the middle of the ocean all right number two guys number two is capture emotions don't capture just people, super important. Don't capture just simple frames. Make sure you capture emotions. Think about all your shots as tiny stories. Instead of having, for example, your friends, your family just pose in front of the Grand Canyon or some other cool place, why don't you ask them to talk to each other and why don't you capture that instead of, you know, the classic tourist shot. It makes a huge difference. Remember, photography is all about storytelling. It's all about giving people emotion through photos and the best way to achieve that is literally capture emotions versus a random frame and you can watch some of the photography videos I dive a little bit deeper if you're walking with stranger on how you can achieve that but that's so important now guys the last one is one of the reason I'm here also and it's something that each and every one of us I think should work better towards it because it makes such such a big difference in our work. Before I share the last one, I have a quick question for you. How would you feel if I dropped more videos on location where I'm shooting, explaining how I'm shooting and I'm basically taking you a, through a full adventure of photography to, a day uh, that, I, uh, that I shoot classically? Let me know in the comments below. I did one in Utah, some of you liked it, but I wanted to know if you guys would be interested or not or if you would find it boring if I was taking more time, you know, and really taking you everywhere and look at that place because I mean that place is so magical I just feel bad not sharing more with you last guys the most important when you're traveling and you want to take great photos is simply to go with other photographers travel with other creators if you're a photographer if you're videographers try to find friends who have the same interest and organize a trip together. You can almost go on a workshop with people if you want, like a lot of photographers do it. I might even do one in Namibia in November this year, so we'll see about that. But for me, it's so important, especially when I'm trying to create, when I'm trying to be a bit more creative. It's, it's so difficult, you know, like you're always into your thing, but suddenly when you have other people around you, it gives you more ideas, etc. Right now I have a few creators behind me, I've got a surf photographer. The project I'm here for, which I will share with you, also involves other creators. And, and to me that is really, really important. I have traveled quite a few times with other photographers or videographers and that's when I get the best shots ever. And if you remember the shots I did on top of the Alps, we literally had two hours to shoot all that content and I used it so much. We got the best shots because we're together, because we're able to help each other. So my last tip is really build yourself a little community of friends that love what you do, so that when you go on trips, you have the same interest. You can wake up at sunrise, you can go and grind together versus having to drag your, your friends that don't like it or drag random people that actually don't enjoy it either. You know, you don't wanna be the burden. You wanna be with other people who love to take photography and really, really can push each other. Woo! All right, we've got our five tips. I hope those have been helpful. I hope you didn't mind the sound of the waves. I thought maybe you're at work or during the transport. It might be a little nice to have some different background noise. It might be very loud, but who cares? If the content was good, leave it a big thumbs up. If you learned something, let me know in the comments what your type of traveling do you prefer to do, what kind of photography. 
And remember guys, get out there, go shoot, try something different, try something new. It's so important. If you want to see more of those videos, obviously hit the SUBS here button, ring that notification bell. It's going to make you huge song. It's going to be amazing. I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.